Welcome to UK Business Show, UK's premier business show where we feature business thought leaders, high achievers, and industry experts. Today's episode is brought to you by World Outsourcing Solutions Limited, a company that specializes in helping executive business owners with virtual assistant services and business growth systems. Here's your host. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It's Trevor here. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about relationships. And our guest, Sandra, is going to be sharing with us some practical steps that we can take to attract the right people in our lives. She's a love and relationship coach, serving clients around the world, predominantly helping single ladies find their dream man. But fellas and married ladies too, stay tuned because she'll be sharing some great tips about relationships and mindset that can help us all. So let's dive into it. Welcome, Sandra Hay. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure being here and thank you for a great intro. Oh, it's great to have you and the opportunity to chat with you. So, yeah, let's let's, let's jump in. Um, maybe to start with, share a little bit about your, your background, who you are and, and what brought you to becoming the coach that you are today. Yeah, absolutely. With pleasure. So my name is Sandra Hay for everyone who is listening and I am love and relationship coach. So as you said, I'm helping mainly women to attract their dream men. But when we work on relationships and attracting the right person, it's basically there are patterns that we always run into. And it's not only for women, like we can apply that to everyone out there, like to men, to married people, to any kind of relationship. And yeah, that is really something that I would like to share. Even in business, that is something that we can apply because, again, if we are in business, we are in relationships because we have clients, we have colleagues, we have, have you know, like suppliers, what, whatever business that you are in. So they are everywhere relationships and we can apply all of these things out there. So anyways, what got me to coaching? Um, well, that was personal story, of course, which started with very, very interesting dating life that led nowhere. So I had this dream of really finding my person and finding a guy that I will share my life with. And I was attracting all these people who, you know, they want something casual. They, they don't want to commit. And I was like, what am I doing wrong here? Like, I'm taking all the right steps. I am putting myself out there. I'm meeting people. I'm dating and it's not working. Like, I'm doing everything that people told me to do, but something is not working. So after one catastrophic dating experience I was like this is enough like I have to figure this out so at that point I completely stopped dating like no dates no man like I will figure this out and that is the time basically when my self-development and my, my personal growth journey started so instead of really looking for solution out there and finding different people and trying to find different dating app or different way to date I really look looked into myself and seeing like, who am I? What kind of mindset I have? What can I change about me to attract that person? Because I realized if I want to attract the right person, I have to become the right person. I have to become that person who believes in myself, who has confidence, who really loves myself. And that was that journey for six months. Basically, I was working on my mindset, on my self-belief, on my confidence, on my health. Like, like it was really self-love six months of my life. You know, basically it was going to work and everything else was like working on myself. And in these six months, you know, like that was April 2017 until October. That is when I went back to online dating and I went on a date with one guy and that guy is my husband now. Uh, in these six months, I lost 50 pounds. I absolutely transformed my life. And I was like, wait a minute, suddenly this is easy. Like how dating is so easy when it was so hard before. So after that, of course, I helped a few of my friends, like we applied the same things and it worked. So I was like, okay, I have to share this with more people. So basically that was beginning of end of my pharmaceutical career because I'm pharmacist and started my coaching journey. So last year I basically become a full-time coach and started really working with women all around the world to help them find their person. Wow. Wow, that's quite a story. So in a sense, it sounds to me like you, you took time out to detox from dating a certain way or approaching dating a certain way, maybe is, is a better way of, of phrasing it. And then when you came back into 
online dating, you found your now husband straight away. Absolutely. The first yeah, I, mean, I was chatting with few people, but feeling was completely different. You know straight away if that is the person that you are looking for or not. Because before it was, you know, before I was listening to these advi advices, you have to meet more people. You have to give chance to everyone. You have this, you, you know, like you have to do all of these things. Yeah. When the truth for me was, well, actually, no, I know what I'm looking for. I don't have to give chance to everyone. I have to give a chance to a guy that I'm looking for. I don't have to give chance to any guy out there who wants to go on a date with me, you know? And these are some um, things that we are hearing so often, almost like lower your standards. You're asking too much. You're expecting too much. Well, actually, no, my desires are leading me to a life that I want to live. If I lower my standard, I suddenly dropped my desire and I will end up in a relationship that will end up cheating or divorce or whatever it is that, you know, unfortunately it happens to many people. Yeah. But for me, like setting that foundation right, um, you know, finding a guy that I'm really looking for, that I really want to share my life with is foundation for that relationship that I want to have. So there is no negotiation there. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. You're right. It reminds me of something a wise man once said about if you compromise to get something, you have to compromise to keep it. And I yes. think that, that's oh, a really that's good. good yeah, a really oh, good. Oh, that is a good one. So, but the same thing is like I see that in business. If I compromise uh, the people that I want to work with, like if I would work with any woman out there, I would be one very unhappy coach and she yeah. wouldn't get results that I want for her and that she wants for herself. So it's the same thing, relationships yeah. everywhere. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. The whole synergy of a relationship, be it, you know, romantic or more business side. Uh, yeah, it just, it works for some people and some people it doesn't, does it? Like everyone's a nice person potentially, but we just don't yeah. all get on the same with everyone that we do with other people. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it, it, I guess it, Part of the liberating thing is realizing that and being okay with that and not think that you're strange if you can't get on with certain people you don't kind of feel that gel or that click um, absolutely because the beauty of of it that we are all so different and we can learn so much from each other but also we have to learn when to let go and when some people are not for us and yeah. not take it personal it's not about us you yeah. know <laughs> yeah it's like from a business perspective trying to find or zero in on your target market isn't it it's like yes in some ways you can help everybody but you're not going to help everybody because there's a certain criteria if you like like if that's the right way of putting it uh, of people that you can help with the services and the products that you offer um, and that's fine isn't it that that's who your kind of your target market is go with that work with those people don't try and reach the whole world um, absolutely absolutely i mean and that is in any kind of business like if you want to apply that on coaching or, or anything else you will always have customers or clients that will be better fit for you that will get better results that will be more happy with your products yeah. and also you will have people who will not like it as much so it's always it, it's basically almost like what you allow yourself if you are allowing yourself to keep that high standard and to work with people who are the right fit I feel that that is where beauty and that passion is because for me, you know, like I, I feel that um, what I've learned through years not to compromise my desires because um, as I have said, I'm pharmacist. So when you see pharmacies, amazing career, you can earn loads of money. And it's like, I remember when I was in the United States and I say to people, I'm pharmacist, I was still at university and they're like, oh my goodness, you will earn so much money. And that is truth, you know, like everywhere in the world, when you say that, it sounds like, oh my goodness, you got the jackpot and you will be very successful. But the point is, I wasn't happy there. So should I choose to stay unhappy for the rest of my life? Because, uh, you know, society considers that my career is amazing and successful? Yeah. Or should I choose to follow my desires and live happy life? You know, <laughs> that's always choice that that is the choice that we are all making. Yeah. Yeah, I think lots of times throughout our journeys, there's trade offs, isn't there? And only ourselves can kind of decide what we're willing to give up in order to get something that actually we really would prefer that Absolutely, so yeah. other people might not be more valuable might not be more successful but if it makes you happy 
and it brings peace and you know you get up in the morning smiling then yeah to yeah. me that, that's a large part of success so absolutely i mean if we would define success as successful per person is happy person not somebody who has the most money or the biggest house or you know i think that society would be quite different one. <laughs> yeah definitely yeah i think you're right so i am curious though so maybe for ladies that are listening or for guys that are listening that are still looking um whether they've you know had relationships before that just haven't worked or are still kind of trying to find the right person you mentioned about kind of the detox journey that you went on so maybe for people that are listening to you for the first time and this is kind of oh a ray of light in my you know my dismal dating journey so far what would you say would be some of the sort of tips that people could start on the journey of actually taking time out kind of like you did and just think yeah what's the reevaluation kind of thing that that they should go through well there are a few steps that i recognize that i've done during these six months and i i'm not sure if i would say it as detox it's more of like reinvention it, it felt like that it's almost um you know like you are starting things not a different thing but you are doing the same thing in a different way if that makes sense yeah. so basically i would uh here recognize three steps that i've taken so the first step was really to connect with that desire like what am i looking for because i realized that before i was going to dating so you know approximately what you are looking for like you don't want a cheater or you don't want a guy who is not respectful or whatever but i don't have real criteria that i'm looking for i never defined who is that person and this was the first time that i defined that person but not only like he looks like this or it's not only about looks it's about values that he was holding like how do i feel next to this person how does he feel about this about family for example what is important for him so it was almost defining values that are important to me in a person uh, do you want a person who is successful in their career or they are quite laid back in that do you want somebody who um, values family or they are more of individual so like just recognizing these values and seeing what is it that is important to me that was like the first step and then when I've done that, it's almost like, okay, that is my desire. And obviously I'm still not on the level of that desire. Vibrationally, I'm not there, otherwise I would have it. So how to get there? Like almost aligning with that desire. And how do we align with that desire? Just match it with our self-belief, with our sense of self-worthiness, with our um, mindset, with that belief okay i'm worthy of this relationship i know that is meant for me so i would define there that we need to align ourselves with worthiness with confidence with mindset that we really have to align with our desire on that level and then when we reach there it's all about receiving and getting that desire which is, which is basically taking action that is putting yourself out there but i wouldn't necessarily just do anything i would really listen to my inspiration and see what is it that i want to do do i want to go online do i want to go offline do i want to ask my friend to introduce me to someone like what is that inspiration that is leading me to meet this person because that inspiration will get you there so for me inspiration was go online and that is exactly what happened so basically i remember i was telling myself from april till october first of october i will meet the person first of october i will meet the person so first of october came and i was like okay no person <laughs> but then in october i went online so basically around 15th of october i created a profile again and all that uh 23rd of october i met my current husband so basically we met online 23rd of october and we went on a first date on 7th of november so it's not that i couldn't get a guy on the first of october but i wasn't anywhere out there like yeah. i didn't date anyone i didn't try to put myself out there in any way so it's almost universe is telling me okay go out do something do something and you are like, sitting home hoping that <laughs> that person will come to you so it's almost like perfect blend of knowing what you want your mindset and then taking action and putting yourself out there so what i was doing before that I was only paying attention to that action bit 
meeting people, meeting people, putting myself out there. And unfortunately, that didn't work because I didn't know what I was looking for and I didn't match with that desire. So basically, these were the three elements that I recognized in my journey. That's really good. As you're saying that as well, I am thinking the parallel there is also within business, isn't it? Finding the clients that you want to work with, those that have the sort of values that you, you agree with. Um, getting your confidence that you can pitch your services, your products, whatever, in a way that will reach them and then taking the action as well. Yeah, it's not about just believing, is it? And as you say, it's not about just action. It's kind of marrying the two things together. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, when you apply to business, it's almost like the same. If you don't know what kind of business that you want to do, like how you will do it, you yeah. can try some things, but you probably won't be happy with it. And if you just do action, it's almost, you know, you can be broke for the rest of your life because you are only taking action, but you don't believe that this is possible for you and you don't believe that you can be wealthy and you believe that success is for some other people, not for you. So yeah, yeah there are, you definitely can apply this to business as well. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like, so if I really don't believe that I'm worthy of blank, 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 whatever it is, you're going to live not having blank 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 aren't you really it's just like yeah, yeah absolutely it's really helped gravitate us towards what we desire um and keep us from it depending on which way our beliefs go so yeah it's powerful isn't it i think mindset on most of the the guests we chat with on on the show we talk about mindset because both yoko and i we realize how valuable it is from things we've learned but also it's it's an ongoing journey, isn't it? We can be really good at one area, potentially, or several, but then be really bad in another area, but not be aware of it so much. Absolutely. So, yeah. for example, last year with all this COVID situation and everything, I discovered that I have belief I'm always healthy. And when I look at my life, like I was always healthy. Even it's not that I never had any health problems, but just even when you have them, you don't believe that they have power over you. So, for example, I had, I don't know, gallbladder operation two years back, but I'm like, okay, it's just operation. I will be done in one week. Whilst other people, oh my goodness, I'm having this operation. This is horrible. Yeah. And just because of that belief that I'm always healthy, I knew that everything will be fine. And yeah, that's it. So beliefs are so powerful. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because they, they influence the actions that we take. The emotions that we feel which you know translates to actions and then brings results so yeah now i know exactly what what you're saying maybe let's just just go back a bit because i do want to just quiz you on this so online dating for people that maybe are, are on sites already or are thinking i've just been listening i really feel i need to do this now tips do's don'ts of online dating um sandra help us out what would what would be absolutely <laughs> especially now come on everybody's dating online because <laughs> what, they are locked down there is no other way <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so the first thing like don't go to date online if you don't know what you are looking for because it's almost like a minefield it's almost you know like uh before you will meet like i don't know five people within a month and now you will meet five people within 10 minutes so it's almost everything is so compact and there is so much more going on that if you don't know what you are looking for you really can get out of it so frustrated and thinking this doesn't work and i will never find my person it can really affect your confidence and mindset and everything so for example i had one of my clients and she's so positive and such successful person in every area but with dating her confidence was so knocked down with that online dating because she was like oh my goodness this doesn't work and she tried so many things and met so many people and it just did, didn't work for her so to avoid that please just be so clear on what is it that you are looking for and if you meet person that is not that what you are looking for it is okay to let them go so for example women will define like i want a guy who is always there for me who supports me and then they go online and then they are chatting with the guy and he doesn't reply their messages 
one day, two days, five days, and they're like, oh my goodness, what should I do? Uh, should I send the message? I was like, well, you said to yourself that you want somebody who is always there for you. Do you really want a guy who doesn't reply your message for five days? If the answer is no, just let it go. If he wants to be with you, he will reply. He saw your message, you know? <laughs> so yeah. it's always really defining what you are looking for and then keeping that, just coming back to that, coming back to this is what I'm looking for. Is this that person or not? And I'm not saying to be very rigid with your, okay, I said this and he's not uh, five foot, uh, six, uh, six uh, foot five, uh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about heights. Like if he's not there, it's not the end of the world. Like just go back to the values that you defined. And yeah, if he's going with these values, stay with it. If he's not, you can let it go and it's fine. You don't have to be stuck with one guy. There are 8 billion people on this planet. If one guy doesn't work for you, go to, to the next one. It's okay. So it's really that blend of knowing what you want, really being clear on these values that you are looking for, and then taking it easy. It's almost trusting that what you are looking for is coming your way. That guy that you are looking for, or in this case, because we are talking to guys, that girl that you are looking for, she's also looking for you. Trust that. It's not that you are looking for her or him and they are somewhere under the rock hiding from you. <laughs> you know, They are looking for you as well. So it's almost having that blend of, I know what I want. I'm really trust and believe that that is coming for me. I have full belief that I'm worthy of that relationship, that I'm worthy of that person. And I'm doing all that I can from the place that I am. Like if that is one dating app, go to one dating app. If that is, you know what, I need a break from online dating. I will be, I will ask my friend to introduce me to someone. Like do whatever you can from where you are and believe that that action that you are taking is enough. You are not missing out on anything. It's not that you missed out on that opportunity 10 years back and it will never come your way. It's not the truth. Opportunities are always available. We are in abundant universe. Like people are out there. Your relationship is out there. Just believe that. So first step is, as I have said, know what you want and then trust that that is waiting for you and coming for you. So do whatever you can from where you are. You cannot make mistakes ever. Everything that you are doing is perfect. You are learning your lessons. And when time is right, that person will come. So it's, again, that blend of I'm taking action and I believe and I have full faith that this is working for me. Yeah. No, that's really good. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. As you were saying, part of that, just going back to near the beginning where you said about the guy's not messaging back. Is he interested? Is he not? From a guy, I would say... I know what I want and when I see it I go after it so if I'm not responding to your message take that as a signal that I either my phone's broken or some extreme things happened or I'm just not interested and that's how you know guys to some extent I don't know maybe you can confirm this or not from a female perspective yes there is kind of a play hard to get element because the lady wants to know that you're really interested but also Ladies have to show interest as well, don't they? Otherwise, you know, it's not yeah. good as well. So I think whether you're a guy listening or a lady listening, if there's a period of time where there's no response, take that as a they're not the right person for you. That's what I would say. I don't know. Would you agree? Well, absolutely. Either it's not the right person or it's not the right time. Maybe that person is going through something personal in their life and then they don't feel like you know, forming any other relationship right now. So yeah. it's basically not taking any of that personal. So you are doing, again, whatever you can from where you are. You send that message. You showed your interest. If that interest is there, it will be re reciprocated. If it's not there, just let it go. It's not the end of the world. Sometimes, but that is that, again, lack mentality of, oh, I, you know, like, and I see that very often happening with women and i know that that was happening with me so you meet a guy and suddenly like you in your head have full future like he's this person uh, we we are getting married that's where we will live that's how many kids we will have like you already um constructed this full future with this person that you saw three times in your life just because we crave so much 
to have that relationship that we want. And now everything that I want, I projected onto that guy that I just met. So basically, I'm not giving him a chance. I just want him to be person that I want him to be, which is not the truth. We are not allowing ourselves to accept him as he is. We want him to be who we think should be our person. And that is that almost even people get into marriages like that. So he will change. He he will change. He will change for you. Nobody's changing for anyone. Everybody's changing for themselves. And that's it. (laughs) So sometimes we have this, you know, almost these false expectations that things will work out without really accepting things as they are right now. And I'm not saying we should all look as what can happen, not only what is, but also from realistic point of view. You are meeting this person and it's re- the greatest respect and love that you can show them, accepting them for who they are yeah. without trying to change them or expecting them to be anyone else. Yeah, no, I I totally agree with you, yeah. I've got quite a few single friends as well and I just, yeah, I think about it quite a lot as well. And we have quite a few different discussions. But yeah, I kind of think... Um, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't get into that. No, maybe, let's not get into that now. No, uh, we could go a long way off course. Let's not do that. Um, so you, tell us a little bit more. About, so you have different kind of coaching programs, don't you, depending where kind of ladies are at in their journey. Tell us a little bit about the different programs that you do. Well, I mainly work with women like either on their self-belief, on their confidence and self-love, or we are working on attracting the, the person. And when when we are working that program to attract their men, definitely first part, again, is that self-love and self-belief. So that is almost like foundation that we are laying to get to relationship that you want, because you will attract relationship again when you are on that level, on level of love. And that means that you have to love yourself. You cannot expect anyone else to love you unless you love yourself. Even if somebody loves you, if you don't love yourself, you won't be able to recognize that. That's why sometimes you will meet amazing guy. He will tell you, oh, my goodness, you are great. I love you. What does he want from me? Because you don't deep down in your, you don't believe in your core that you can be loved. That's why that is the first piece that we are working on. Self-love, confidence, and really getting your mindset right. So, of course, We are going through your past relationships to see, because sometimes these past relationships are really where is the the root of our low confidence or the mindset that we are having. That's why we are basically unpacking these things to see what was happening, what needs the most attention. And then from there, when we saw where you are exactly, that's when we are bringing you to to the level of your desire with your confidence, with self-love, with mindset, with whatever that we are working on. And at the end is... Basically, the last step is then realizing what kind of dating you want to do. Is it online dating? Um, Do you prefer something else? How we can approach it and choosing the platform and pictures and profiles and whatever we we need to do to get you there. So basically, that is the, the program if you want to attract your person. And if you want to really work on your confidence or self love, because a lot of women really want that piece, they are quite happy in their life. They are not necessarily, oh, I need rela- relationship right now, okay. but they want relationship and they realize that confidence and self love is the piece that they are missing. So that is the other program that we are that we are working on. Again, unpacking whatever was from your past, either relationships or Sometimes even family relationships can affect this. So we are unpacking all of these things and then getting you to a place where you really feel confident and in love with yourself and really great in your own skin. That sounds really good. Yeah, definitely. So what's the kind of the general, I suppose, time frame? I suppose everyone's different, but I think for people that are listening, thinking, yeah, maybe I need to. I need to kind of look into this a bit more. Maybe one of these programs is. Um, it's right for me now, kind of thing. This is what I want to do. What's the sort of? Is it six months? Is it a year? Is it? Well, my programs are either one month or three months. Okay. Uh, I have also single sessions, but I don't recommend that uh, that much, just because in single session you cannot get 
that much results. Yeah. So sometimes people will need single session because they really want to work on something specific. And if you know, know exactly what that is, that's great. We can have one session, but usually we are having weekly sessions for a month or three months. And I feel that that is the perfect time to realize, um, you know, like sometimes even after one month, they will extend or after three months, they will extend realizing, okay, I have much more work to do. But I realized that basically in that time, Time frame most of the of the people will get work done that they that they want on the other hand again as you said people are very unique and they have individual journeys so sometimes you will need few sessions only for somebody to open up and you know like to start trusting the, the journey to start connecting with their desires because you have so many people who have been hurt in their past yeah. that right now even though they are willing to take the steps they are still not ready to open up and to trust that things will work for them. So sometimes we even have to address that through a few sessions. So it's really completely unique and completely, we are all, again, different persons. We are all on our different paths. So it's quite unique. But again, as I said, one month or three months is what I've seen is, is the time frame that we get the most work done. That's good. Yeah, that's really good. Because I'm, I'm kind of, as as you've been sharing as well, I'm, I'm also thinking the... I'm thinking the romantic side, but also from a business perspective, like if if we've got business owners listening that are kind of chasing clients, same, you know, chasing, chasing, chasing the same clients and not getting a response, kind of like trying to find, you know, the right guy and, and that not working. A lot of what you're saying to me sounds like the principles would work in the business context as well. So maybe they could go on one of your programs learn how to improve their relationships but also the extra benefit is actually i'm relating to my suppliers better or my team or the the other relationships that maybe don't have a romantic element but the, the fundamentals are the same aren't they if i'm approaching any relationship from being in a better place myself then it's got to have a benefit all around hasn't it so i think i think it's really good i anybody listening that's kind of on the fence and thinks they should certainly have a conversation have a chat with sandra uh see how she can help you <laughs> yeah definitely because i think it's one of those things that when we're in a mess like that and we're kind of going around in circles we're repeating the same behaviors getting the same results and we don't know how to change we do need somebody else's help and yeah, because we all have blind spots i mean yeah i there are so many things that i couldn't see for myself that's why I have coaches. We yeah. all need this. Even it doesn't have to be a coach. It can be a friend or family member. Like we all have blind spots because we are living in the same mindset and the same type of, you know, like we have 60,000 thoughts every day and 80% of them are recycling. I mean, that means that we don't see everything. We have these habitual thoughts, habitual emotions. And it's so amazing when somebody can look something from different perspective, because you see yourself, when you change perspective of something, you can completely change the way you feel about it, how you think about it. And that's sometimes, that's sometimes why we need somebody else just to see things in a different way and help us to get to get to that place. And as, a, as you said, like relationships are everywhere. Like the other day I was listening to a lady talking about relationship with money and applying attachment theory, which is, you know, like from from family relationships. So relationships are everywhere with money, with clients, with suppliers, with employees, with whatever you have, relationships are everywhere. And that's why it's so crucial to get them right. And you can again apply all of these, uh, all of these steps to any kind of relationship. You know, at the beginning when I started coaching, so you don't have that much confidence, you don't have that much belief, and then you have one person who is interested in your coaching, and you are so attached, oh my goodness, will they work with me? Will... And then you realize, well, wait a minute, if it's right for them, they will, if it's not, they won't. Yeah. So when we stop chasing people, and we start believing that the right people will come to us, or we will find them, or in some way we will connect, it always happens. Because again, there are 8 billion people out there, so why would we why we will be attached to any one person, any one client, any one employee, anyone, 
anything like yeah. it's abundance of of people everywhere so when we realize that and when we start seeing our relationships as something that we can work on as something that we can change something that we can improve basically everything improves perfect absolutely perfect yes we need to kind of wrap up our discussion today um i find it really interesting oh my goodness I know it's gone fast, hasn't it? Um, yeah, I think you should definitely come back at some point. Um, but maybe as we've spoken about your programs, um, how how can people get in touch with you? What's the best way for them to touch base? As everyone else, I'm on social media. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. So, yes, I'm mainly uh, I'm mainly active on Instagram, so uh, you can find me always there. I'm at the Sandra Hay, and as well, I'm also on Facebook. I'm even on TikTok if you want to connect there uh, and really great starting point for somebody who who is looking either to find their person on what or, or want to work on their confidence or self-love you can reach out and we can have like um, just a consultation to see what is it that you should be working on what is your starting point right now so this consultation is absolutely for free so if you want to chat about it please i mean if you can leave link for people that would be great yes, and if not, they can always reach out to me and we will schedule something yeah yeah no definitely there'll be a link underneath where wherever you've clicked on to to listen to this there'll be a bio and details in there so now that's good and yes i would i would recommend everybody checking out sandra on instagram tiktok um it's very musical it's very good your your marketing is very musical i like that <laughs> it made me smile it did make me smile <laughs> I had Instagram reels and I really enjoyed them. But now for some reason, Instagram, I don't have reels anymore on, on my Instagram and I'm hoping it will come back soon. But yeah, I love that. It was so fun. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. But yes, as you say, like head to the website as well. That's that's kind of the mothership, isn't it? That they can touch base with you at first. So brilliant. Thank you. Our time is our time is up really. But thank you for sharing everything that you've shared um, is useful in lots of different ways. Uh, if people aren't necessarily looking for a, a life partner there's still lots of things they can put into practice so for everybody listening i would yeah definitely encourage you to go to sandra's website have a look around have a chat with her see if if it's a good fit if it's the right time i think you'll definitely learn some things she's got a lot of value to to add to the world to people that are struggling in different areas with regards to relationships so yeah definitely do that and as we always encourage you as we we sign off for today be proactive you know life is short really you get one one spin at life really so make sure you're doing everything you can to invest in yourself and to help other people as well so that's my passing or parting thought for everybody today so until next time have a good day bye for now Thank you for listening to Ukai Business Show. We will be back to bring you more episodes with success stories and advice straight from the experts. Want more? Check out www.ukaibusinessshow.com. Get your free trial of our virtual assistance service today. Just visit www.worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. Quote WOS18 or send us an email at support at worldoutsourcingsolutions.com.